Hey, I'm Logan Miller, and you're watching the Permanent Rain Press. Hey, everyone. It's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press, and I'm so happy to be joined once again by Logan Miller. How are you? Good. Good to see you again. It's so it's nice to be. Time. It has. <clears throat> it's been like six years now. Five, so. six years. Yeah. We haven't aged a bit. You're still 45, I'm assuming. Yes, yes. You know, I will uh, stay that age forever. Um, and I'm in a uh, alternate universe where I just stay that age. <laughs> um, you've mentioned that age like multiple times in interviews, so must be something special about it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess 45 is is when somebody really takes a hold of their lives. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, I strive to be like a 45 year old in a 30 or so year old body. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. The maturity of a 45-year-old with the beautiful body of a 29-year-old. There we go. Um, let's talk about Escape Room Tournament of Champions. You are reprising your role as Ben Miller. Last we see him, he is agreeing to go to Manhattan with Zoe to face Minos. Where is his mindset at in movie number two? Yeah, well, in the first movie, uh, Ben was a bit of a cynic, you know? He had um, kind of given up on life, and then once he found his way through the escape rooms after he survived. He's got a second chance at life and he really wants to take that um, to full force. Um, he also feels uh, a debted responsibility to help Zoe achieve her revenge in taking Minos down. So, um, you know, he, he wants to be there for her. They, they were in it together um, and they want to take down this evil corporation no matter what. And so you see Ben actually taking more of a lead role and um, being a little bit of a commander while he is introduced to all of these new characters and uh, helping Zoe along the way. The stakes have, as you mentioned, never been higher. Um, tell me how this film elevated the, the stages or the rooms since the first movie. Yeah, I mean, what's crazy is you know, when we did the first one, it was a little bit of our own experiment to see if fans would react to a film franchise centered around escape rooms. And we were met with such an am amazing response. We knew that we had a responsibility to make it so much bigger. And now this time, um, you know, we've got a little bit of a muscle. Uh, we are back in action and we uh, know what to expect. And I think with that previous knowledge of making the first one, we can amp things up and um, just make it all the more special. The details in the rooms are always so good. Uh, I know we got to see a lot of them in the trailer between the train, um, the beach and lighthouse area. I think it's a bank or something like that. So yeah, um, yeah. pretty scary, frightening things. As you mentioned, new group of champions and survivors, aside from you and Taylor Russell, tell me what these dynamics were like on set with these new faces. Yeah, you know, um, it was great. I mean, they came in and were ready to work and ready to do something crazy. I don't know if they expected it to be as um, tiring and rigorous as possible, but um, you know, me and Taylor, we gave them a little uh, update on what to expect. Um, so you know, we said just make sure that you're ready to have sleepless nights. Um, you're going to be sore in all different regions, and um, you know, be ready for. Um, a hibernation period afterwards. And so, uh, yeah, they um, appreciated it. I don't think they knew what to expect. And, um, but we gave them a pep talk and said, you know, let's go balls to the wall and let's, uh, let's, let's make it even better this time. And the ADR sessions, there must be so many cries of pain and struggle. I knew, no, you yourself have done quite a few of those. Yeah, I think that there is probably with all of the ADR sessions that I've done for the first and the second one, I could um, have a three hour record of me just doing different kinds of wails and screams. Um, I don't know if anyone's going to want to hear that, but uh, you know, it could be, uh, we could put it in the archives for Sony or something. It could be a thing. Uh, for those yeah. who are on the fence about tuning in, what is your one sentence pitch to potential viewers? Um, the thrill of your life in theaters again, 
escape room tournament of champions sold i think they need to like put that before the movie trailer there like we go. Keep people's interest yeah that means i have to go to another adr session damn darn right yeah. uh, let's talk about another project you were part of recently which is karis dorsey's short film silver tone tell me a bit about your character daniel and this film's story yeah well um you know karis is an uh, amazing uh budding filmmaker and it was really fun to be able to uh work with her she's an old friend and so um we kind of through this thing together. And um, I think it was a story about uh, Karis's experience with um, maybe some old past relationships and stuff. And uh, so, you know, it was uh, showing this uh, collaborative music process even with these two uh, characters kind of being at odds with each other. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. We shot it like um, in like two days up in LA and, um, I had a really cool like mid-century modern house that was up in the hills and um, yeah it's always great to be able to work with friends again and uh, yeah I, it, it turned out pretty well. So you do play one half of an indie music duo a bit of a different genre from what you used to with the guitars I know you love music and you like to have jam sessions you've been playing around with since how have those been going? Yeah, yeah. Over the pandemic, I have learned to be a synth lord. Um, a friend of mine uh, brought me into the world of synths and I never looked back. Um, but I think it's just fun. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm always trying to figure out what the next stage of uh, a musical career may be. But um, upon like doing some experiments and stuff, I, I think if I wanted to do anything with music, it would be to like, score a feature of my own or something like that because i i really like ambient tones along with uh just like telling a story through the music have you started dropping vocals yet or are you kind of focused on the instrumental side i'm getting there i'm getting there um you know i'm pretty confident in a lot of things that i do but um singing is not one of them uh so you know maybe that's me being over judgmental but um i guess you could say i have vocal dysmorphia um but uh yeah I, i'm i'm figuring my way into it but uh for now we've got some uh just instrumental vibes so we don't get to hear you sing with karis in the movie you do actually See, that's the thing. Um, they are like, well, Logan, you're really not that bad. And I was like, no, I'm terrible. I have the voice of a like horrid hog, but um, they uh, thought differently. So maybe it is all just in my head. That's exciting. I know it premiered at Aspen Shorts Fest in April. So hopefully a wider release later this year, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'm unaware of what the release is, but um, yeah, it'll... Um, maybe pump out onto VOD or some kind of uh, streaming platform. So you've posted a couple of videos in, on social media, I think 2019, 2020, prepubescent problems with fellow actors, Thomas Mann and Keir Gilchrist. Uh, can we expect a new chapter in 2021? Oh God, I don't know. Maybe we've aged out of the roles, but um, it was a lot of fun just messing around with those uh, different filters and stuff. and. Um, yeah, um, those were just like goofy moments where we're just hanging out, we've got nothing to do. And so, you know, let's get stupid, let's get creative and uh, let's just dive back into the stupidity of childhood. Those are great. I know you've been friends with those guys for a while now. Tell me what's the secret to maintaining a good friendship because you guys have all been so busy. Yeah, well, um, fun stories, uh, listening, communicating and lots of beer. It's as simple as that. Exactly. Um, I think all of you guys have been labeled indie film darlings at some point in your life. Of course, you were all in the Stanford Prison Experiment together, wonderful movie. Um, hopefully later down the road, you'll get to work with them again. Uh, we're going to play a game called Throwback Trivia. How it works is I'm going to be asking you questions that you've been asked in past interviews or related to your own content and we'll see how good your memory is. Are you ready? I'm ready. Mammoth Film Festival Red Carpet 2020. What did you say was your dumbest injury? 
Oh my God. I said that my dumbest injury probably uh, jumping off the stairs when I was like seven years old and spraining my ankle. That's incorrect, but that's a good, that's a good response. You said something about you broke your thumb once and then you said your mom slammed your hand in the car door. That Not is, sure if correct. that's, is that factual? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I guess it wasn't the thumb. It was like uh, my actual like ring finger, but we were both in the car. We were, um, you know, doing a road trip and we stop off at a rest stop and she was in the back with me. And I followed her lead um, into getting out on her door side and she didn't see that. And so she slammed the door and slammed it on my hand. And so um, then cut to me and my entire family chasing me through the parking lot because when I'm in uh, horrid pain, I like to run like a chicken with his head cut off. So um, that was quite a, a display for ongoing uh, spectators to see hopefully you don't hold that over her I think the embarrassment of having their child run around is enough absolutely yeah mistakes were made it was accidental um you know my mother is not abusive in any way she's a lovely woman number two your everything is Ian video trip to Hollywood whose star does Ian pose next to and highlight on the Hollywood Walk of Fame well Rodney Dangerfield of course absolutely I mean, uh, Ian's one of the biggest fans of Rodney Dangerfield. We love a good thing of comedy. We needed to know what happened next in that story if Ian survived his kidnapping and got his shrimp. Uh, yeah, actually, there is a part two on uh, YouTube. I don't know if you've actually seen it. But, I probably uh, missed it because um, now I need to go see what happened. Yeah, um, we see where we pick up where we left off. Um, you know, he was in his kidnapper's car and he finds himself in a neighborhood and is introduced to a bunch of people that um, uh, have a strange uh, behavior in some way. I'll, uh, I'll let uh, the, the viewers check it out for themselves. Intriguing. Uh, mm -hmm. Number three, Entertainment Tonight 2016. The song that people would be surprised to know was in your music library was uh barbie girl aqua that's pretty good yeah yeah, oh, that's good. yeah uh our interview with you 2015 i asked you if you could be any ice cream flavor which would you be and why and what was the ice cream flavor you listed i probably said like uh i think i said uh a rocky road because yes a rocky road you have a really good memory. That's actually Boom. still our best answer to this question, like to date. You said all you need is good tires to stabilize your car. That was uh, yes, yes. Uh, so Michelin star tires. And I hope that I get a uh, campaign with the, the, the good people at Michelin. And finally, Fan Lala 2011. What did you say was your guilty pleasure show? 2011, 10 uh, years ago. Hoarders? Was it Final answer. No. Final answer. Oh, what it was, was it? Ace of Cakes. Ace of Cakes? I was lying because I never even watched that show. I don't like cake competitions. You're and I being like a, a, a poser for the, for the interview. Who yeah. was that? Well, you know, that was back in my Disney days. And for some reason, Disney really wanted me to um, advertise for Ace of Cakes. So I guess I was forced into it. And we have one last question, a wild card question for you. Can you name all of the Spice Girls? Um, well, we got Baby Spice, Scary Spice, Ginger Spice, Posh Spice, and Sporty Spice. Do I know any of their names? Hell no. But do I know their Spice Girl names? Hell yes. Um, Victoria Beckham is the only one that I can think off the top of my head. And then... Ginger Spice is named like, oh, it starts with an M maybe. I don't know. Do you know them? Jerry. Jerry. Jerry Hallowell, I think. There's two Melanies. M Melanie C, I think is sporty. I, mm -hmm. Mel B is scary. Mel B. Yes, yes. And baby is Emma. 
Emma, love it. Yeah. Emma well, see, the thing is, I uh, refuse to believe that they actually have um, legal names. I want them to all just be Spice Girls forever. That's the perfect answer. We would have taken just the the five baby posh, scary, sporty ginger. So you got that right, and you did well in oh. the game three for five, which I think is really good considering how old some of the answers are. Uh, thank you so much, Logan, for taking the time to catch up. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. I can't wait to talk to you again. Make sure to catch Logan in Escape Room Tournament of Champions. It is out July 16th, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody.